So if you'd like to start and just sort of reflect on your year last year, um, thrown into that situation or COVID year, um, how did you go about leading that community? Well, I think uh, the most important learning for me was that it reinforced everything that I held dear as a leader. So it, it reinforced firstly, the need for me to communicate. And obviously there are added complexities to that communication last year than what we normally have, but communication being so important when many of our staff and students and, and parents were hard to contact and when even not on site. So, so certainly the, the importance of that many parents communi uh, communicated with us to say that it was the best they've ever been communicated with. So a good in, in the whole school. scheme of things, it's, it's a good thing to, to have. But also making it a priority to spend time with people mm -hmm. and just to give them the time. And, and I think that was more important than ever uh, for my leadership and for everyone's leadership during last year, uh, but also gives us lessons for the future. And also to be increasingly flexible and to think outside the square in terms of solutions for communication and, and methods of communication, because we're still in that pandemic situation and, and we still need to be mindful of, of keeping everyone safe and, and making sure that everyone is well. And that's one of our prime concerns in a community. So overall, I suppose that comes, comes about in presence and making sure that you're present to people, both in person and, and also online and, and other more means of communication. How do you manage that with your time right now in running a, a, a very large school? Yeah, it was really making it a priority. I believe if you hold something dear to yourself, then you make it a priority. Uh, so that was certainly one of my key priorities. And, and to really reassure people that we had things under control as much as what we could, as much as what we knew, uh, but then also that we valued them and what they were doing under difficult and different circumstances as well. Uh, it also made a priority in terms of relationships, which was my second point, uh, to, and the trust that we had from organisations like CDP and also from NESA and other organisations that gave us greater trust and enabled us to do more and to be a bit more creative, uh, that was really enabling for all schools, uh, certainly for myself as a principal leader, but for staff and for parents and for students as well, and gave us uh, a little bit more security in what we were doing. I think also opportunity came about last year and that was reinforced to me as well. We were in difficult circumstances and different times. So to be able to rethink how I did things, how we did things as a school, but also my expectations of myself and also others. And it gave us time to do things like renovations that we wouldn't have had time to do. So just something as practical and pragmatic as that, it gave us an opportunity to do. So, so it really made us think outside the square. And uh, in, in my leadership, it was about communicating those expectations and then following through that people were delivering on that as well. And, and the last point I'd like to make is on well-being. And the fact that it really reinforced to me that religion and faith and well-being go hand in hand. And we really needed our faith and called on our faith for the intent and the focus that it provides us uh, during times of need. And, you know, it should provide us with that at all times and sustain us at all times, but especially times in need. And, and that's something that... Uh, really reinforced and brought home to me uh, as a community. And we can do that in, in many different ways and forms. Well, sort of looking back now with all that, um, you know, it's, it's, it's wonderful. Um, how's it changed your leadership? Has it enhanced? And the other way to answer the question really is, what have you learned? I think it's about people and it's, it's just reinforced that to me. It's always been a big priority of mine, but people make schools and make communities and faith communities alive. Uh, so it's really about people and about making time for people at all times, making that a priority. And it also taught me that I believe we're more resilient than what we think. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of really focusing on what we are doing and what we're able to do rather than what we're not doing and can't do. Mm -hmm. And I think the more we focus on that, 
the better we'll be as educational and faith communities. Uh, well, and what about the you know your learning agenda? Okay. That that that's front and if we're not communicating, if we don't have relationships, uh, if we don't focus on well-being and being that part of the development of the whole person, then learning can't occur. Uh, learning is always at the forefront in, in everything that we do. So I believe we have to get the communication and the relationships and everything that goes with that right before learning can occur properly.